Hello and welcome to the draw for the Tokyo 2020 Olympic football tournaments. I'm your host, Samantha Johnson, and in normal circumstances, we would be doing this in Tokyo with an audience joining us. But today, we're live from Zurich with viewers tuning in from around the world. Soon, we'll discover the path which awaits our qualified teams for both the men's and the women's tournaments. But first, let's hear from the FIFA president and IOC member Gianni Infantino. Dear IOC president, dear Thomas, dear president Hashimoto, dear ladies and gentlemen, dear friends in Japan and all over the world, today is a day of celebration with little more than three months to go until the Olympic Games Tokyo 2020. Having uh, already held the 1964 Games, Tokyo and its sports-loving people return this year as noteworthy hosts. Global attention is now upon the Olympic Games and two great competitions, the women's and the men's Olympic football tournaments. The Olympic football tournaments are prestigious highlights in the careers of players all around the world. This would be no different for the 28 teams, 12 women's and 16 men's when they kick off the Tokyo 2020 tournaments on the 21st and 22nd of July. As a member of the IOC, I also want to pay tribute to all athletes participating in these games and to their dedication, passion and commitment to remain competitive in the challenging circumstances the pandemic has presented. All this in true Olympic spirit. We are now ready for the draws and I would like to thank the IOC and our Japanese hosts. On behalf of FIFA, I wish Tokyo and all the football venues a safe and successful event. I very much look forward to some wonderful action in Japan which will bring joy and excitement to the Japanese people and to supporters all around the world. So, good luck to everyone and see you very soon in Tokyo. Thank you. Bye. Well, as President Infantino says, the Olympic football tournaments are hugely prestigious highlights in the careers of players and the world will certainly be watching. OK, let's also hear from the president of the IOC, Thomas Bach. Dear FIFA president, my dear IOC friend and colleague uh, Gianni Infantino, dear Olympic football players, dear Olympic friends, when on 23rd of July this year, the Olympic Games Tokyo 2020 get finally underway, they will send a powerful message of solidarity, resilience, and the peace uh, to the world. And today's draw of the Olympic football tournament is another important step on this uh, road to Tokyo. These Olympic Games Tokyo 2020 will be the light at the end of the dark tunnel. We are all still in, in these very difficult uh, moments. And there, the Olympic football tournament begins uh, even before the opening ceremony. So football will uh, send the very first light at the end of this uh, tunnel to uh, the Japanese people and to all the billions of fans around uh, the world. So I wish uh, to all the Olympic football teams uh, good luck, successful preparations, and I'm really looking forward to see you in uh, Tokyo. All the best. Indeed, football kicks off at the Olympics before the official opening ceremony and will be one of the first sporting moments of the Games, and I personally cannot wait. Right, our final message comes from the seven-time Olympic athlete and president of the Tokyo 2020 organizing committee, Seiko Hashimoto. Tokyo 2020組織委員会会長の橋本聖子でございます。本日は 
関係者の皆様のご尽力により、東京大会のサッカー組み合わせ抽選会が開催されますことを心からお祝い申し上げます。東京オリンピック開催までいよいよ100日を切りました。まだなお世界はコロナ禍に包まれておりますが、この状況でも日々のトレーニングを欠かさず、オリンピックでの活躍を目指して、活動してこられたアスリートの皆様、そしてそれを支える関係者の皆様に心からの敬意を表します。私は東京大会の開催を世界中の人々にとって希望の光が見えるような舞台にしたいと考えております。また、私ども東京2020組織委員会は、東京大会に参加するすべての皆様にとって、これなら安心と思っていただけるよう、日夜検討を重ねています組織委員会は安全安心を最優先に皆様をお迎えすることを改めてお約束をいたしますそのためには皆様にもさまざまなご協力をいただくことになりますが大会成功のためご支援を何卒よろしくお願い申し上げます最後にたくさんのファンタスティックなプレーで世界中を魅了してくれることを楽しみにしております本日はありがとうございました。And we all echo those sentiments and thank Tokyo 2020 for their dedication and hard work in the preparations so far, with less than 100 days to go. Now, let's meet two very special guests. Attracting the world's best players with global ambitions, football at the Olympics has built a legacy of prestige. This year, quality, drama, and great performances are as highly anticipated as ever. Brazil, the reigning men's gold medalists victorious at Rio 2016, have qualified to defend their title, but Germany's elimination at the quarterfinals of the 2019 FIFA Women's World Cup means we'll see a new winner in the Women's Olympic Football Tournament. Today, I'm delighted to introduce two legends of the game to assist us with the draw two time Olympic gold medalist and United States forward and midfielder, Lindsay Tarpley. And I'm very pleased to say that Lindsay joins me now live in Zurich. Thank you for joining me. Great、Thank、to see you. you. Thank you for having me. Okay, well, <laughs> as a player yourself, you know exactly how it feels to wait on a draw like this. So, can you tell us how the players and the teams will be feeling right now? Well, you know, it's interesting because with the pandemic and having the delay and now being less than 100 days to the Olympics, it's a different type of feeling. So, as a former player, being able to know your opponent, your venue,、um, how things are going to work, and what to really focus on in training and preparation, it's, a, it's the next step into actually being at the Olympics. So, it's a very exciting time. Indeed.、Uh, Lindsay, thank you thank very you. much. And joining Lindsay on the stage is going to be the former international defender and member of New Zealand's 2008 and 2012 Olympic squads, Ryan Nelson. And Ryan also joins me live in Zurich. Great seeing you.、Uh, look, we're almost, well, less than three months to go until the tournament kicks off. How, you, how excited are you for this draw? Well, I'm really excited. So I can imagine all the players and the teams, they must be super excited.、Uh, this is where they find out who they play against, where they're playing, who they avoided. Um, this is where it gets really real and it's so exciting. Yep, this is the business end, isn't it? It is.、Uh, Ryan, thank you very much. And we're about to find out what awaits in this year's Olympic 
football tournaments. First up, we have the men. And I'm happy to say that we're in very, very safe hands. And I'm joined by our draw conductor, FIFA's Jaime Yaza. Jaime, thank you very much uh, for joining me. Now, we've just heard from our two legends. Can you just tell us from the organizing side uh, what it's been like seeing as this is uh, the games that's been postponed by a year? Well, like for everyone, it's been an extremely challenging year. And uh, we could not visit Japan in so many occasions that we would have done it. The teams didn't have the chance to visit the facility, so it's been it's been hard. But uh, luckily, we have a very professional counterpart in Tokyo 2020 in the IOC. Modern technology allows us to keep in touch. So uh, I think the cooperation has been excellent. And I would like also to thank Tokyo Nizido Nizido, saying to them, Arigato gozaimashita. OK, someone's been practicing their Japanese there. I commend you for it. I may if you'd just like to take your position at the podium. So now it's time for the first part of today's proceedings when we find out which men's teams will be lining up against each other in Tokyo at this year's Olympic football tournament. Jaime, over to you. Many thanks, Samantha, and uh, konnichiwa for all the public that has been watching us through the various channels. The Olympic football tournaments will take place between the 21st of July and the 7th of August in six cities across Japan with Tokyo, Kashima, Miyagi, Saitama, Sapporo, and Yokohama hosting the football teams. Overall, 28 teams have qualified for the Olympic football tournaments Tokyo 2020. 12 women's teams and 16 men's teams. And today, it will be my privilege and my duty to organize one of the first two draws to determine their pathways in the respective tournament. Let me explain first the draw for the men's tournaments with this time under 24 years players. As you know, it had to be postponed by the AOC. Therefore, instead the usual under, under 23 players, we have under 24 years because obviously the players that won the qualification on the field are the ones that have the right to participate on, in the Olympics. So, the 16 men qualified teams, they have been divided into four team pots, standing in front of Ryan here to my right. Thanks, Ryan, for being here. And the teams were allocated to the pots based on two criteria. The sporting performance in the last five Olympic football tournaments and the results during the recent qualifying championships in the confederations. Pot one, we have the host nation, Japan, and the highest seeded teams. Brazil, Argentina, and Korea Republic. The remaining 12 teams are allocated in ranking order from pot two to pot four. In pot two, we have Mexico, Germany, Honduras, and Spain. In pot three, we have Egypt, New Zealand, Cote d'Ivoire, and South Africa. And finally, pot four includes Australia, Saudi Arabia, France, and Romania. As the teams are drawn, they will be placed into four groups, groups A, B, C, and D. In their position in these groups, they will be determined by drawing balls from the respective group pots. Lindsay here to my left will be helping us today. Thanks, Lindsay, for that. So we draw the four teams from pot one and place them in the groups one by one from A to D. Once we have finished the first pot, we'll do the same with pots two, three, and four. Nevertheless, you will notice during the draw that the placement of the teams might not always go in order from A to D, because we may have to speak over some groups. And the reason for that is a very important principle that we have to respect. Two teams from the same confederation cannot be placed in the same group. They played the qualification together, they should avoid being on the same group. Let me give you an interesting example that you might see along the draw. In pot four, we have two teams from UEFA and two teams from AFC. So two teams from Europe and two teams from Asia. That means we need to avoid drawing Asian and European teams together in one group from the beginning up until pot four. So very early, we might have some constraints and we might need to skip groups already in pot two. And the last thing is that you will see that in pot one and group A, we have two red balls, one in each, and these represent the host of the competition, Japan, 
who will be placed directly in position A1. So I hope the explanation was clear for everyone, it's not too complicated. Lindsay, are we ready? ready? Rian, shall we go on? Then you know the drill, please give us Japan the host with the red ball. Japan. And obviously it was Japan, Japan that qualified automatically as a host, but this is the 11th competition and having featured in the every, direct, every edition since 1996. Well, one red ball to my right, and let's go for the red ball to my left. Okay. Lindsay, please, do us the honor. A1. And as we mentioned, position one in group A for Japan. Now, all the balls are the same, so steer them well and give us the next team that goes to the next group. Korea Republic. And we have Korea Republic. They will enter this tournament as the Asian champion, winning the 2020 AFC Under-23 Championship which secured them the place at the Olympics. So, we're gonna move now to B, and please give us the position in Group B for Korea Republic. B2. Very good, Korea Republic, the Asian champion, goes in position two in Group B. You know the drill, let's go ahead. Argentina. And we have Argentina, two-time Olympic gold winner, returning after winning the Commebol qualifiers. Argentina will be placed in Group C, so let's move to Pot C. Please, Lindsay. C3. And position three for Argentina in Group C. Excellent. No need to steer the balls, is the last one. Brazil. And it is, of course, Brazil. They finally took gold on home soil in Rio when they overcame Germany in a penalty shootout with Neymar being drafting the winner of this one. So we're going to move now to Group D, the last one. Let's see where Brazil goes. D1. In position one for Brazil. Excellent. We're gonna move now to group two, and as I remind you, there might be already some constraints. We'll see what the hands of Ryan, which <laughs> luck they bring. Spain. And España, we have Spain. The highlight of Spain, obviously, history in the Olympics is their gold at the 1992 Olympics played in Barcelona. And Pep Guardiola and Luis Enrique were among the successful squad. Well, um, I mentioned it before and it had to happen. Obviously, it's a European team, so we need to jump and place Spain in Group C. So please, Lindsay, let's go to Group C and give us the position joining Argentina. Two Spanish-speaking teams in the same group from the beginning. C2. And position two for Spain joining Argentina. You stick to the same. Let's go on, Ryan. Germany. And the Mannschaft Germany, the silver medal they collected in Rio, is their best Olympic performance, topping 1988 when they won a bronze medal, at that time still called West Germany. Same applies another European team, so Germany will be moved to Group D. Please, Lindsay.
D2. And joining Brazil, Germany in position D2. Very exciting matches ahead of us. Let's go on. Mexico. And we have Mexico now. Few nations have more appearances in the men's competition than Mexico. This will be their 12th time. And only Italy, Brazil and the USA have more. Obviously, there is no constraint in this case, so they will be joining host Japan in Group A. Please, Lindsay. A3. And position three for Mexico joining Japan in Group A. One more to go. Honduras. And one team left, Honduras. This will be Honduras' fourth successive men's Olympic football tournament. They only missed Athens 2004 since their debut at Sydney 2000. And they join Korea Republic in Group B. B3. And position B3 for Honduras joining Korea Republic, as I said. Let's move to part three with the African teams and another one that might ring a bell. Go ahead. South Africa. And we have South Africa as the first team, although they have yet to progress from the group stage at the Olympics. They earned a 3-1 win over Brazil in 2000, as well as a goalless draw in 2016. They will be joining Japan and Mexico in Group A. A2. In position two for South Africa will be the opening match for Japan facing South Africa in position two. Let's go. New Zealand. And New Zealand, here they go. New Zealand romped to victory in the men's qualifying tournament for Tokyo 2020 with 33 goals in winning all five matches. And they join Korea Republic and Honduras in Group B. B1. And position one for New Zealand in Group B. Let's go. Two more to go in this pot. Egypt. And Egypt, they have made the most appearances by an African nation in the men's Olympic football tournament. And Tokyo 2020 will be the 12th time. They will be joining Spain and Argentina in Group C. C1. And position one for Egypt. One more team to go. Côte d'Ivoire. And Côte d'Ivoire, they are featuring in the men's competition for the first time since their debut in Beijing 2008. And back then, they were eliminated in the quarterfinals by Nigeria. They joined Brazil and Germany in Group D. D3. And position three for Cote d'Ivoire. Well, we have, uh, we're almost there. Let's go for the next one. Port four.
Australia. And we have Australia. Australia haven't featured since 2008, but they have history. They lost to Ghana in the bronze medal match at Barcelona 1992. Uh, we have to avoid the same confederation as well as the same confederations Korea Republic and Japan and therefore we will be moving them to Group C. Please, Lindsay, Group C. C4. So, position C4 in Group C joining Egypt, Spain and Argentina for Australia. Let's go. France. Uh, France. Tokyo will be France's 12th appearance, the second most of any European nation. But this is their first qualification since Atlanta 1996. They joined Japan in Group A. A4. And there was one position left, and it was correct. It's position four for France. Two more. Let's see the first one. Saudi Arabia. And we have now Saudi Arabia. They will be participating in the men's competition for the third time in their history, having been there in 1984 in 1996. Same confederation as Korea Republic. Therefore, we will be placing them in Group D together with Brazil, Germany and Cote d'Ivoire. D4. And position D4 for Saudi Arabia. Last one for this batch. Romania. And we have Romania there back in the men's Olympic football tournaments for the fourth time. The first Olympics since the 1964 Games. And there was one place left, one ball left, so they will be joining Group B. B4. And position four for Romania in Group B. Well, that was really a thrilling draw. Lindsay, thank you so much. Don't go too far. Neither you. We're going to need you. Thanks, Ryan. See you in a few minutes. Let me very briefly recap the completed groups for all of you. So we have in Group A, which is going to be played in Tokyo Stadium, we have Japan, South Africa, Mexico and France. In Group B, that will be played in the Ibaraki Kashima Stadium, we have New Zealand, Korea Republic, Honduras, and Romania. In Group C, which will be placed in the Saboro Dome, we will have Egypt, Spain, Argentina, and Australia. Finally, in Group D, which is being played in the International Stadium of Yokohama, we would have Brazil, Germany, Cote d'Ivoire, and Saudi Arabia. Well, I think we are looking forward to extremely, extremely exciting matches. And we all would like to see football in these Olympics. So let me finish by thanking all of you and as well wishing all the teams, like they say in Japan, Gambate Kudasai. Thanks, Samantha, and it goes back to you. Thank you very much, Jaime. I think after that draw, we are in for a treat. Definitely some great matches to look forward to. So let's quickly get the thoughts from uh, Ryan and Lindsay. Now, uh, Lindsay, I don't know if you noticed this, but uh, Mr. New Zealand 2020 slash <laughs> 21 over there, as soon as he picked out New Zealand, his face just kind of beamed. Now, you're facing a uh, Korea Republic as the opener. I mean, how do you think New Zealand are going to fare? I kind of really like their group, in all honesty, <laughs> and that's no disrespect, but there's some really good teams out there. So I think they're matched up pretty good in that group, and you know, South Korea is very good. It'll be a tough game, but I like it. I think for me, Brazil against Germany, that really that stands out for me yeah. as well. But let's talk about matters on the pitch, especially when it comes to uh, the legends here. Um, can you just tell us the importance of you know, showing out for your team and playing, representing your country? Yeah, I think playing for your country is, is kind of the ultimate kind of goal. 
but playing for your country in the Olympics is a different level. Mm -hmm. And that's, you know, to be an Olympian is something that can never be taken away from you. And it's something that's really special beyond the clubs and beyond the international kind of games. Mm -hmm. It's the Olympics. So it's amazing. And what about you, Lindsay? I mean, how important is it for you to put on that jersey and um, just show out, represent your country as well? I couldn't agree more with what he said. And, and the fact that um, it is your country, and I was always so honored to be able to represent the U.S., and ever since I was a little girl, um, that was my dream, was to be able to play for USA in an Olympics and World Cup. And so it's such a great opportunity, and uh, there's nothing like being able to wear the jersey. Okay. And not only you know, did you show out for your, your country, you actually <laughs> scored in a <laughs> final. Look, just go through step by step how that actually felt, because you actually obviously went on to win a gold medal as well. Mm -hmm. Like, just... Tell us all about that. Oh, it's such a great memory for <laughs> me. Um, what I find interesting about that situation, though, is you know, everybody saw the goal, but people don't realize uh, what I did to prep for that moment. Mm -hmm. And I spent every day leading up to the Olympics working on my long range finishing. And I was fortunate to have that opportunity in the final. And I was ready and prepared for that moment because of the work I had put in. And so as I watched the Olympics, you always have your Olympic highlights or your Olympic memories. Mm -hmm. And I immediately go back to how much work and effort these players and coaches and staff have to put in to be able to shine on the biggest stage. So you are living proof that practice makes perfect. <laughs> Which leads us very nicely to our next segment. Now it allows us to uh, take a trip down memory lane and take a look at some of the best goals in the Olympics, uh, including Lindsay's. Yeah. position to try and work the angle with his right boot. Great chance here. In it goes. Neymar. Oh, a little space building up here for the opening goal. And what a start is Marajan. Make it up as a road. I am my own motivation. And I love it so. I don't make no exceptions. I just do as I please. I ain't got no regrets, no. Just one of the things that I love about me. I do my thing. I do my thing. I do my thing. And I'm about to show you how. I do my thing. I do my thing. Feels like living in a dream. Flick on the overlap. Tolia, fire! Germany on level! I think you have to agree that looking back at those amazing goals certainly builds excitement going into the second part of today's event. Now, with the men's groups now decided, let's move on to the women's draw. I'm delighted to welcome onto the stage FIFA's Chief Women's Football Officer, Soraya Behrman. Soraya, thank you very much for joining me. Now, the last time we met, it was actually in Istanbul uh, in 2019 for our interview, and it was just before the Women's World Cup. And I remember you talking about your aspirations for the Games. Lo and behold, <laughs> it actually went on to be the most successful Women's World Cup. What's happened uh, since 2019? Thank you very much, Sam. It's a pleasure to be here. It seems like a long time ago now, but yeah. indeed, uh, France 2019 was uh, a huge milestone for women's football. We have a lot of momentum for the women's game now off the back of that Women's World Cup. And some of the incredible things we saw, for example, were a huge increase in participation numbers for women and girls playing. We have some lofty goals. We want to have 60 million women and girls playing by 2026. And it's competitions like the World Cup and this Olympics 
course that really helped to generate that interest and bring a new generation into our game. So very excited for today. Excited indeed. Ad, I don't know about you, but for me, the standout in that World Cup uh, was France against USA. Oh, yes. That was absolutely insane. Amazing game. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, so if you'd just like to uh, take your place at the podium. Okay, it's the moment we've all been waiting for. Sarai, please take it away. Thank you, Samantha. Some really exciting draw results for the men's tournament, and I'm very happy to step in now and switch the focus to conduct the draw for the Women's Olympic Football Tournament. Now, one interesting point of difference for the Women's Tournament is that the senior women's teams will be representing their countries. I love this because as we lead into the FIFA Women's World Cup in 2023 and the qualifying pathways for the event, the Olympics will give us a really exciting taste of the international action that we have in store over the next few years. A very similar draw procedure as earlier applies for the women's tournament. However, for the benefit of those watching, I will now repeat the main principles. The 12 participating teams have been divided into four team pots according to their position in the latest FIFA Coca-Cola Women's World Ranking release from April this year. Pot one on my right in front of Lindsay contains our host team Japan, as well as the highest ranked teams USA and Netherlands. In pot two, there are Sweden, Great Britain and Brazil. Pot three includes Canada, Australia and China. And finally, in pot four, we have New Zealand, Chile and Zambia. As the teams are drawn, they will be placed into three groups, E, F and G. Their positions in the groups will be determined by drawing balls from the respective group pots located in my left in front of Ryan here. We will begin the draw from pot one and then proceed with the other pots in ascending order. As with the men's draw, the constraint which doesn't allow two teams from the same confederation to be placed in the same group applies. This means that in the draw process, we might skip over groups. Lindsay, Ryan, you've had some experience with that, and so you just need to follow my guidance. Once again, pot one and group E contain red balls, which represent the national team of our hosts, Japan. Similar to the men's team, they are pre-assigned to position one in group E. And we're gonna kick off the draw by confirming exactly that. So Lindsay, could you please do us the honor to get us started and pick the red ball from pot one. Japan. Japan are the reigning AFC Women's Asian Cup champions, crowned in 2014 and 2018 with one nil victories over Australia in each final. Now Ryan, let's confirm their position in group E. E1. E1, that's correct. So we're off to a very good start, mm -hmm. team. Lindsay, do us the honours. Let's see who comes out second from pot one. Netherlands. So the Dutch have qualified through the 2019 FIFA Women's World Cup, finishing runner-up to the USA in only their second appearance in the finals. Now they're going to be in group F, Ryan, so if you could please draw us the first ball from group F. F4. Excellent, Netherlands take position F4. Final ball from pot one, please, Lindsay. USA. USA, they hold the record for tournament wins. Between August 2008 and August 2016, they won a remarkable 13 consecutive women's matches. They will be in Group G, Ryan, so let's see what position our current world champions will take. G2. G2. 
Excellent. So we're now going to move on to pot two, Lindsay. And just to recap, in that pot, we have Sweden, Great Britain, and Brazil. Let's see who comes out first. Great Britain. So Great Britain are competing in the tournament for the second time, having previously featured at the London 2012 edition as our host nation. So they're going into Group E. If you could draw a ball from Group E for us, please, Ryan. E3. E3 for Great Britain. All right, let's move on. Next ball from pot two, please, Lindsay. Sweden. So alongside Brazil and USA, Sweden are one of three teams to appear in each edition of the Women's Olympic Football Tournament since its inaugural edition in 1996. Now we do have a constraint here, we can't put them in the same group as the Netherlands, so we're going to move across to Group G, please Ryan, and let's see what position they will take there. G1. G1 with a very tough opening match against our current world champions, the USA. One final ball from pot two, please, Lindsay. Brazil. Brazil, that's correct. So Christiane from the Brazilian team is the leading scorer in the history of the women's tournaments with 14 goals to her name, including two hat-tricks. Now Brazil will be in Group F. Ryan, please do us the honours. F2. F2. Starting to take some shape in the groups now. Right, we're moving along to pot three, in which we have Canada, Australia, and China. Give them a mix, Lindsay, and let's see who comes out first. China. So China have set an Asian record with their sixth participation in the competition. They've only missed out on one edition in 2012. Now we do have a constraint with China. We can't have them in the same group as Japan. So we're going to move across to group F and let's see what position they'll take in that group. F1. F1, another very tough opening match there, China versus Brazil. Excellent, let's see who's coming out next from pot three. Canada. So Canada claimed the last two bronze medals. They defeated France in 2012, and then they bet the host Brazil to claim their second bronze in 2016. No constraints this time, Ryan. Group E, let's see what position they take. E2. E2, and we now have our opening match for the Women's Olympic Football Tournament, our hosts versus Canada. One final ball from pot three. It should be Australia. Let's confirm that. Australia. And indeed it is. Australia scored 21 goals in just five matches in their successful qualifying campaign for Tokyo 2020. Now they will be in Group G together with Sweden and USA. Let's see what position they take. G3. G3 for Australia. Okay, guys, we're nearly there. We're into pot four now, which contains New Zealand, Chile, and Zambia. Let's see who comes out first, Lindsay. G3. 
Chile. So Chile will be participating for the first time in their history after defeating Cameroon in the CAF Comedy Bowl playoff earlier this month. They're going to have the whole continent behind them in South America. Now they're going to be in Group E. So let's draw the final ball from Group E. E4. E4, that's correct. The final position in Group E, completing the group there. Two balls left. Please do us the honours, Lindsay. Zambia. Zambia, another debutante. They will be participating in the Women's Olympic Football Tournament for the first time in history in Tokyo 2020. They will be in Group F, joining China, Brazil and Netherlands. Let's take their position. F3. F3 is correct. The final position available in Group F. And one final ball to draw. Lindsay, please do us the honours. New Zealand. New Zealand will be making their fourth successive appearance in the Women's Olympic Football Tournament, having featured for the first time in 2008. And there's only one possible spot for them. Ryan, your home country, please reveal their position in Group G. G4. G4, so the opening match for New Zealand will be a bit of trans-Tasman rivalry there against Australia, which will be very exciting for the home fans there. Great. Now all the teams know their positions in the tournament and the challenges they must overcome to secure Olympic gold. We have just moved one giant step closer to kickoff. Let me recap the groups and the path to glory for our 12 participating teams. In Group E, playing in Sapporo, will be Japan, Canada, Great Britain, and Chile. Group F, playing in the Miyagi Stadium in Miyagi, will be China, Brazil, Zambia, and the Netherlands. And in Group G, playing in Tokyo Stadium, we have Sweden, our current world champions, USA, Australia, and New Zealand. Over to you, Samantha. So I just want to bring our legends back into this. Uh, Lindsay, what a draw. I mean, just going on from our conversation with Sarai about the, the strength and the momentum of the women's game, mm -hmm. this is going to be absolutely amazing. And the fact that one of these teams is going to go on and actually win the gold medal, something that you know all about. <laughs> You know, I think it's so important to highlight how much women's soccer has grown and, and how quickly it continues to grow. So building off the momentum from the World Cup and now having the Olympic stage to continue to, to play and shine and show all of their talents and then looking forward to the next World Cup. It's such an important time for the growth of the game and I'm looking forward to seeing these women play at the highest level. Okay, and Ryan, you have to agree with me. We've got some openers uh, right there when it comes to the women's draw. How impressed are you? I love this draw. I think Lindsay's going to be pretty nervous for the USA taking the teams from down you're under. You're going to hear that from him, yeah. really? And Sweden, <laughs> that's a tough group, Group G. And I love China versus Brazil, uh, Great Britain versus Canada. There's some powers. This is, a, this is a great draw. Indeed. Lindsay, do you want to, like, let's <laughs> just hang you out to dry here. You know, I'm excited. I, the USA, um, full of veteran leadership, young talent, well coached. I love how they're playing, mm. uh, technically, tactically, doing so many things well. So, um, yeah, uh -oh. they, they are the ones to beat, let's I, be honest. Uh, <laughs> All right, so, so. I, I'm going to give you the, uh, the last word. All right. I'm going to stay out of banter, <laughs> but it's so exciting, especially thinking of teams like the Netherlands, Chile and Zambia, who are participating for the first time at the Women's Olympic Football Tournament. We are very much looking forward to all the matches and a celebration of international football this July. And on behalf of FIFA, Jaime and myself, I would like to congratulate all the participating teams for qualifying to the Olympic football tournaments and to wish them all the very best for their final preparations in this historic event.
Thank you very much, Sarai. And thank you to our legends, Lindsay Tarpley and Ryan Nelson, to our draw conductors, Jaime Yaza and Sarai Behrman. And of course, thank you for all watching and following the draw worldwide. We wish all the participating teams the very best of luck in Tokyo. Goodbye.